we've interacted with uh, Dr. Pawan Goenka uh, during this entire pandemic crisis, and we've used words like revive, survive, and thrive. So, Mr. Goenka, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Things are moving as per the script. For companies which have survived and revived are now flourishing. What is your sense for the auto sector for 2021? Are we in for a good year or a great year? <laughs> well, one would always hope it's a great year. Uh, but but uh, what I would like to say is that one thing that is for sure by now, that the demand that we are seeing is not a pent-up demand. It is a structural demand uh, that is coming back. Uh, I think anyone who had doubted that should really not be uh, concerned about that. Number two, what is very clear is that uh, uh, with the new product launches uh, that are planned for uh, 21 by all companies, because many of the companies had held back on product launches, that's certainly going to spur demand. And on top of that, if the government of India comes in with some kind of stimulus to grow the auto demand, I think then the demand will really take off and will lead to a great year. Uh, what has happened in the last couple of months, which is very gratifying, is the fact that uh, the HCV industry, which was lagging uh, for the last several months, has started now showing signs of revival. And there's a good growth that has happened in the month of November and December. So once HCV is also on the growth path, I think auto industry overall should look pretty good in uh, FY22. Mr. Goenka, when the auto sector in a sense contracted, and this happened in 2019 before COVID also, it's logical auto companies, they came out and they requested and they, they made a case for GST cut. Demand has come back despite no GST cut. So can I say that this kind of a GST rate is something which in a sense the customer has accepted? Well, I would uh, uh, say so. Uh, I would say so. Uh, there's no doubt that industry would love to get a, a cut in GST rate because GST rate is very high in auto, uh, but uh, it's sort of become the norm now. And everybody realizes that uh, for buying an auto, especially if you're buying more than four meter long auto, you will have to pay significant amount of indirect taxes. And that has kind of become part of the overall, overall pricing. Uh, but what I would uh, still request the government to consider, uh, while they may not be able to reduce the rates very much because of the overall uh, requirement for uh, tax revenue that the government has in these difficult times. What I would still request them to consider is to simplify. There are just too many rates. There are eight or nine different GST rates that we have. And we keep playing with sort of this thing, that thing to try and fall in the right GST bracket. And I would really hope that the government will say that let's just keep two rates, 28% and 43%, and that's it. Uh, and not have all of these different rates. Uh, right now, I cannot expect a rate reduction. Perhaps when the economy is fully back on, uh, on, on track, perhaps government would reconsider a rate reduction. But right now, I do realize that practically speaking, uh, to expect uh, overall rate cut is difficult, but I hope that simplification of rates uh, is on the cards. What we've seen, it's not only your sector or the sector which I represent, media sector. Every company has taken massive cost cuts, massive cost cuts. If I may use the word massive for the third time, let me use this because everybody has taken massive cost cuts. Because of that, margins have expanded and suddenly Q2 and Q3 numbers, even Q4 numbers may look strong. But what is your view? at the top line level, because top line is a function of demand and affordability. It is not a function of uh, margins and also cost cuts. That is the bottom line factor. So what is your view on that? So let me, let me first uh, go to what you said about massive cost cut. Uh, I would say that the cost cut that we have seen, actually more than half of it is really not cost cut, but removing the fat. Uh, which a cost that we're incurring, which perhaps was not required. Uh, and that's where a lot of the cost reduction has happened uh, in terms of travel with the use of digital media for, uh, for, for meetings, just like what we are doing right now, a significant reduction in cost. And this will never come back. This will never come back to us. Maybe travel will go up somewhat, but the kind of reduction that we have seen, probably 75, 80% will continue. Uh, the reductions have happened in events. The reductions have happened in uh, inventory costs. The reductions have happened in... Uh, uh, in 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 uh, communication cost, uh, these will not these will not come back to the 
uh, level. Uh, and therefore, these cost cuts that we are seeing, uh, I would say more than half of it is for good. Uh, and therefore, it will continue to aid in our uh, bottom line. Now, coming to top line, clearly top line is a function of uh, volume uh, and function of price. Now, in auto industry this year, there has not been any significant price cut or increased incentives that had to be given to propel demand. Uh, in fact, uh, most companies will tell you that they are pretty much at the level of last year or maybe even slightly better than last year in terms of uh, overall uh, incentives uh, uh, that had to be given to the customers to, to get volumes. Also because of BS6, uh, prices have gone up and therefore per unit revenue has gone up, which will lead to a top line increase. Uh, and, and therefore, and, and given that volumes are also going up and we don't expect 2021 uh, to be uh, uh, any worse than 2020, there will be a revenue growth for most companies. Of course, there are some companies that will do better, some will not, uh, that, that competition will continue. But uh, overall for the industry, there will be a, a, a reasonable revenue growth uh, that, that we will see in 2021. Uh, you also have to keep in mind that uh, many companies have not passed on the full BS6 cost increase yet. And as the companies become more, more comfortable with the, with the continued volume uh, or continued demand, uh, the, the gap in the BS6 cost increase will get passed on during this year. Uh, one, of course, the, 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 the big thing looming uh, ahead of us is the commodity price increase, uh, which will also lead to a price increase, uh, which is not desirable. Uh, because if we were to pass on all the cost increases, uh, then there could be a significant increase in price. So commodity price increases are a matter of concern right now for the auto industry as to where it will lead in terms of price increase and what that might do to the volume. Dr. Goenka, keeping these factors in mind, as you brought up just now with respect to the commodity price increase, the COVID challenges that a lot of auto companies have had to face as well, do you think that now it's time across the board for companies to revisit capital allocation strategies? And how much do you believe it has and will be altered due to the pandemic impact? Well, uh, look, I would say that uh, COVID was a very good teacher uh, for us uh, in personal life and in uh, business life, both. Uh, and many companies, many companies, including Mahindra, have uh, introspected uh, during the time of uh, lockdown, uh, March, April, May, to see where our business goes, what we should focus on and what we should not do. One thing that is coming very clear is that most companies, most groups are kind of veering towards their core and getting out of things that were, let's say, sort of playground uh, for companies to try this and try that. Most companies are coming back to their core where they have a right to win, where they have a strength in India, where they have a strength globally. Uh, and then automatically that is leading to capital allocation, uh, which is going more towards core, doubling down on few things, getting out of few things. And I think that's good for, the, uh, for, for each company overall, uh, because, uh, because spreading a wing too far, uh, which had happened in the last three, four, five years for many, many companies, uh, I think has probably led to dilution uh, of where we should be spending money. Uh, and and, and uh, this capital allocation will definitely help. You have seen in case of Mahindra, for example, we have made very clear announcements on, uh, on what we are going to be getting out of, some very significant announcement, big announcements on what we will not be doing, which you would have not imagined a year ago uh, that we will, we will make such announcements. But I think it was a time for us to really introspect and see what is Mahindra, what is Mahindra brand, where should we put our money, what we should be strong in. And over the next uh, two to four years, uh, I'm sure that's going to lead to a much better business performance, um, both in terms of top line as well as bottom line uh, for Mahindra and for all the companies that, that have used the COVID time to introspect and get back to the core, uh, do capital allocation where it matters and not get into uh, what I would call a flight of fancy. So clearly shifting priorities, which is something that m and as well is adopting. And Dr. Goenka, just, uh, you know, taking up on that point, do you think that uh, now, though, you know, how will be the approach rather when it comes to electric vehicles? Will you be doubling down on that as well? And what, how do you look at the approach for from a sector point of view as well? Well, as we had uh, communicated uh, just about two weeks ago uh, on 1st of January, 
uh, that uh, what Mahindra is going to be focusing on is core SUV uh, and 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 uh, not really get into anything else when it comes to passenger vehicles. Uh, we have always been an SUV player uh, and 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 we have very strong SUV brand. Uh, there have been uh, uh, some drop in market share uh, undoubtedly in the last uh, several years. Uh, and and the game that we have to play now is to really really become the SUV player in India and hopefully uh, in other markets of the world. So that's that's one part of our focus. The second part of our focus is electric vehicles, which we again talked about uh, on 1st of January, where we are going to be doubling down. Uh, now, doubling down means what? Uh, we already perhaps uh, is a company that has invested the maximum in electric vehicles in India uh, with uh, almost 1,000 crore plus of investment already made. Uh, our focus so far had been on the shared mobility on last mile connectivity, on last mile delivery, uh, and the products that we have like Trio, Trio Zor, uh, which is doing extremely well right now and has almost four to six months of demand uh, that we are not able to meet. Uh, uh, and and, and products like Atom that is coming up, the EKUV uh, that is coming up very soon, the Evarito, uh, which will get phased out. All of these products were aimed at shared mobility, last mile connectivity. Now what we're saying is that as we move forward, this part is fine, this would continue. This is where the volume growth will be in India. This is what India needs right now. But we are also going to get into in a big way uh, in the personal mobility space, which we had for the time being kept aside. Uh, the only product that we had talked about was the S210, which we had shown in the Auto Expo, which is to be launched towards the end of next year. Uh, but we have now saying that we are going to be working on multiple platforms uh, for uh, personal mobility, not just the S210. S210 is a product that has come out of uh, XUV300, uh, which is an uh, IC engine converted into electric vehicle. We are also going to be starting work on a couple of platforms, perhaps, which are what we call born electric platform. That means platforms designed ground up for electric vehicles. And that then allows us to really get a much better performance uh, of the electric vehicle because it is dedicated to be electric. So that's where we are going to be putting in more money. And that's what we meant when we said doubling down on electric vehicles. Okay. When we're talking about the revival, the demand in the rural sector particularly, do you see that challenged at all on the back of the farm bill agitation? It's gone on for quite a prolonged period of time. Well, uh, of course, the farm bill agitation that is happening is very unfortunate, uh, and I hope that there is a solution uh, that happens soon. But I would say that that does not fundamentally change what is happening in the agri side, uh, uh, agri sector, or the rural sector of India. Uh, the the rabi crop, uh, the flowing has been extremely good. Rabi crop will be very good, perhaps one of the best rabi crop that India has ever seen. Uh, the farmer income is very good, and therefore there is no reason why there should be any let up in the in the in the agri growth in india uh, at least uh, uh, for for rest of this year and again uh, when we come to kharif of 2021 it will depend to some extent on monsoon uh, that it has already uh, always done but keeping in mind that we have very good reservoir level uh, perhaps the effect of monsoon this year even if it is not good will not be very severe so uh, looking at all of this i would have to think that uh, uh, <laughs> the agri demand or tractor demand that has been uh, absolutely unbelievable uh, up to now uh, will will continue to remain good uh, for the for I would say at least this Ravi season, rest of the Ravi season, and for the Khadif season of next year, and then we'll have to wait to see what happens in the Ravi season of 2021. Uh, and and overall, it is not just a question of uh, what is happening with uh, with with sowing in in Ravi or Kharif. It's everything coming together uh, very well, as we had said in the uh, several months ago that the farm income, the sowing, the, uh, the, the, the levels of uh, reservoir, uh, the overall sort of positive sentiment that is there in the, uh, in, in, the, in the rural area, in the agriculture area, of course, somewhat tempered because of the farm vegetation right now. But uh, as I said, I hope that that will be soon resolved. Uh, and therefore, I, I, I remain very bullish on the agri sector and on the overall rural demand. Uh, coming from the income of agri sector, or even other goods, uh, uh, durables that are sold in, uh, in in rural in rural areas. Hmm. All right, Mr. Goenka, just hold on. Just give us one moment. We just have a short commercial break. We we'll just resume this conversation in a minute. Seven point 
सिक्योरिटीज जहां हर फ्यूचर्स एंड ऑप्शंस ऑर्डर सिर्फ बीस रुपए में और इंट्राडे फ्री अभी शुरू करें ट्रेड फ्री प्लान इन्वेस्टमेंट इन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल द रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली बिफोर इन्वेस्टिंग in conversation with Dr. Gwenka MD and CEO at M&M um also wanted to get a sense from you on the impact of uh, higher material prices whether or not you feel consumers at this point are really ready to absorb any kind of price hike is that something that you see uh, uh, happening in the industry right now would you be looking at it i mean how are you handling this well the demand uh, up to now is very robust uh, i think uh, many companies currently are constrained by what they can manufacture mahindra is certainly one of those uh, and and we have very robust demand so given that scenario uh, marginal increase in prices uh, and in fact that uh, normally in january every year prices are increased so we have announced for example a 2% price increase and the 2% price increase in january uh, is normal and therefore that should not be dampener on demand uh, the, the the real the real sort of uh, uh, proof in a sense is the fact that there isn't that much of an expectation that customers have had in the last several months uh, on on discounts or uh, uh, subvention of pricing uh, and that kind of says that the customers are uh, perhaps in a position to pay a little bit more uh, for the product uh, uh, given still that we have a demand uh, supply shortage uh, i do not i cannot say right now whether the companies can pass on all the price increase that has happened in the commodities uh, or partially but certainly a partial uh, increase is 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 very much doable uh, for for most companies and i think uh, end of the day uh, companies will have to because nobody can absorb absorb the kind of commodity price increases that we are seeing and one will have to simply get uh, again get used to it that uh, this is a reality uh, with the with the commodity increases that we are seeing and that probably affect will not just be in auto effect will be in almost all uh, sort of uh, durable goods uh, uh, that have uh, uh, sort of commodities coming in as a major cost of input and it's happening across almost everything uh, all the commodities and therefore uh, all products not just automotive products will see an impact of Mr Goenka now the triggers for the auto sector one is affordability which is a function of lower interest rates high discounts second is that how are you feeling about your disposable income and what the cash levels are uh interest rates right now are low auto prices are also uh, auto companies are also uh, you know passing on whatever benefits uh, whatever benefits which are available but at what point in time do you think we potentially could be st- staring at a market share fight because that's the time when things gets dangerous between auto companies new model launches fat discounts uh, right now everybody is excited that demand is coming back sorry i missed in between uh, you said something at what point would we see what no i'm trying to understand that right now everybody is excited about the fact that demand is coming back but there would be a point at which discounts price war market share gains those strategic calls will be taken do you see that happening in 2021 i wish i wish i knew i knew whether that will happen or not um my my sort of take is that we will not become irrational uh, that is my take um uh, we have the auto industry overall has gone through some very difficult times uh, because of the investment in bs6 because of increase in cost because of bs6 because of not being able to pass all of it uh, uh in into the pricing and in some sense the cost reduction uh, that you talked about earlier which has happened during covid-19 has come to a rescue and therefore most companies have managed to maintain their 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 the profit margin in fact mahindra's profit margin as we announced in the second quarter Uh, was higher than what it was the the it previous year in spite of all the challenges of bs6 cost increases prices not being passed the cost not being passed on and so forth so therefore uh, in some sense in financial performance 
the companies are not in uh, a dire uh, situation. Uh, the the, the PNL is looking reasonably good. The balance sheet is looking extremely good because uh, uh, the 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 inventory reduction that has happened in the industry by force uh, and a new lesson for us that hopefully will continue and uh, our overall inventory in the industry and to, uh, so the so balance sheet is looking very good uh, the the dealer uh, payments customer payments are happening in fact better than what it has been in the normal times so so i think i think there is no financial stress that i see on the auto companies right now and therefore i don't see anything illogical irrational uh, happening in the next uh, six to nine months. But again, uh, this just to predict anything uh, for the future is a dangerous thing because we really don't know what will happen tomorrow. You speak to your dealers and uh, your peers. What is your understanding on the inventory level? At what threshold do you think inventory levels will be bothering dealers and they may hurt demand? Well, uh, Typically, for, on an average for the industry, uh, before COVID, uh, in the passenger vehicle segment, a 30 to 35 days inventory was considered to be a good inventory. Uh, now, I think uh, most companies are saying 30 to 35 days actually is too high. And we need to work, we need to learn to work with 20 to 25 days of delay inventory. Uh, and that's what I would consider a healthy inventory. Anything lower than that, uh, perhaps, is too low. And anything higher than that is unnecessary and not required. Uh, and and uh, Mahindra is aiming towards that kind of number. Right now, we are lower than that uh, because of the supply constraints. But we are aiming at 20, 25 days of inventory as being the normal inventory when supply constraints are not there. Uh, and, and ensuring that we don't get into a situation where we increase inventory beyond, beyond this level. So I think, I think that would be a very good level to aim for. And uh, I had done a back of the envelope calculation which tells me that if all companies uh, bring down the inventory level 20, 25 days and also do a very good inventory control in their plants and with the suppliers, auto industry could take out as much as 50,000 crores from the working capital. And that, again, imagine that is sort of the, the learning from COVID, uh, which will help the industry in reducing uh, working capital and therefore improving the balance sheet of almost all the companies. Dr. Goenka, pleasure as always. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, for sharing us in depth, uh, really currently, uh, how things are evolving at M&M &M and also the industry.